Good job, guys. All right. God is good. God is good. Um, like I said, this is a little bit of a, a different service uh, this Christmas. This whole Christmas has been kind of uh, different for some of us. Maybe, I know for certainly in my family it has been, uh, just with a lot of last-minute changes uh, and expectations of what you think is going to happen. Uh what we had planned on uh, for my family, uh, who in town, you know, I have uh, my aunts, Sheila and Altonette, who live uh, close to us, my family, my sister, and my parents, uh, Pastor Paul and Delia, they're, you know, we, we, we're all together here, and then my brother usually flies in from St. Louis, and uh, so at, right before the Christmas Eve candlelight service on Friday, um, I was just wrapping up a couple things getting in the car, and I got a call from my dad, and, and he was not feeling well and decided to get a test for COVID, and he tested positive. So uh, he was doing the message on Friday night, and uh, previously, Pastor Tim had someone in his family that was sick, and so he wasn't able to be there, and so we'd already kind of shifted things around, and then we had our, uh, uh, that happen, and so, but the candlelight service worked out really well, and, and I, was, I thought it was great, and everyone pulled together. Uh, it's a very beautiful service, and so uh, uh, then, you know, that kind of threw a wrench in our gears and our family. Uh, my brother decided, you know, it, it's just not worth it to get stuck uh, in Texas, so uh, they canceled their trip. Not that Texas is bad, but, you know, you might have to get back to, to, other, to the rest of the, his world, and so, uh, you know, that's a disappointment for my kids, and, you know, they're not going to see their cousins and all that, and then... Uh, my daughter wasn't feeling good, and, and so she we kind of quarantined her for the whole all of Friday, and then we were able to get a test on Friday night, and she tested positive for COVID too. So she that was an interesting Christmas when you're like FaceTiming your your kid, opening their presents in another room in the same house, you know, while they're uh, while they're quarantined, and uh, and then my mom yesterday, Pastor Delia, she tested positive as well as she was taking care of Pastor Paul. So lots of wrenches thrown in the in the gears. We uh, we kind of went to Juliet came to our house and s- sat on the porch with her family as we were in between glass. Uh, and uh, Eva was off in another area looking through another window and did the same thing with my parents. Uh, it's an interesting time that we're living in. And you know I, I was encouraged though that plans are going to change. Plans are. Uh, they're just plants, and but the great thing is, is that we can be okay with that. We can be okay with change, and I was uh, just just thinking about, through all of this. This was not a typical weekend for us. It wasn't what we expected. Uh, this morning isn't even what we expected. A number of people weren't. Uh, they were serving on team with weather production or other areas that weren't able to be here uh, as well, um, and you know, we filled in where we could. And I'm very thankful for our awesome teams, uh, our, our dream team from the ushers, the greeters, the security, and kids, and youth, and production, and worship team. Uh, there's a lot of change, but you know what? This is what I've, I've kind of, throughout this whole year and the last two years, have, have realized is that church is always going to change in how we do certain things. How we do is, is just perpetually going to change whether it be through technology or whether it be through a pandemic or whether, whatever the case is, there's going to be change that takes place, but our why we do church never changes. The reason why we're here today is not to attend a service that has great production or what have you or a great kids' ministry, the, the, which we do have, uh, but the, 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 the reason why that we are here is to worship Jesus to lift up the name of Jesus, not just as individuals, but together as a church family. And whether you're watching online or you're here in person, I want to encourage you if you're watching online and not able to be here, uh, I, I hope that the, the fourth wall is broken uh, going into wherever you're watching, on your phone or on your TV, and you are a part of this church family. You are participating in the worship this morning. So I just want to think, I just feel like we should encourage uh be encouraged with that because, you know, even we don't even know necessarily what the next couple weeks is going to look like. Uh, And I'm okay with the change. I don't know about you, but I'm okay with with changing things up if we need to. 
Pastor Justin and I were, were talking about that earlier this week, uh, just about it's okay. It's okay if it doesn't look the exact same way. Uh, but uh, God is good. Amen. Um, uh, Kennedy, would you do me a favor and hand me that bottle of water right there? Well, on Sunday, we had, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, on the candlelight service on Friday, our, our verse that we used was found in Luke chapter 2. And I wanted to reread that um, and then give a short message. And then I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up at the end. And I'd like to worship the Lord with some more songs. We've been, our, this whole, whole season, we've had kind of a theme uh, to have our eyes on Jesus, our eyes focusing on Jesus. And so that's why at the end of service each, each week, we've, we've had a song that has specifically been about Jesus, lifting the name of Jesus. We're going to sing some of those and, and some of the Christmas carols we have, too, again, at the end of service. This, this verse right here in Luke chapter 2, I'm going to just read this here. This is uh, verses 8 through 15. It says, That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. can't imagine that scene. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Here's the good news. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly, not just this one angel, but the angel was joined by a vast host of others the armies of heaven praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth and those with whom God is pleased. When the angel had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. I love this story. We talked about on, on my message on Friday night how the, the peace, is, how important that is, that Jesus comes to bring peace, that our peace is found in the Lord. And I love this story for another reason, and that is the shepherds. I love that God chooses the shepherds as the first people to worship Jesus. He chooses the lowly. He chooses the humble, chooses the meek, you know, and, and I kind of, I can relate to this. I feel like this is relevant to us today because I don't know about you, but it, this doesn't seem like the logical choice to say, okay, the, the king, the savior of the world, the Messiah has entered into, he's born today. If I was God, which I'm glad I'm not, I probably wouldn't have chosen just a few random shepherds nearby to be the first people to be invited to worship him. I would have had some grand entrance. I would have had truly important people, you know, quote-unquote important people, uh, come and worship him. But that's not what God did on the night Jesus was born. You know, the shepherds were nobodies. You know, and, and most of us, I, th I think we kind of feel like that sometimes. I know, I know myself, I, I want to feel important. I want to, uh, to make a difference in the world. I want, to, uh, I want to be noticed. But a lot of times, that is really not the case. Most of us, that's not really what our experience is. Most of us, if, uh, if there was some a king or someone coming into Houston, Texas, we wouldn't get the call to say, hey, we want to, to, you, know, you to greet the king. I don't, I don't think any of us in this room would get that, that call. We're like the shepherds. A lot of times we feel ignored. We feel unnoticed. We feel forgotten. Maybe even feel unwanted, unheard. <clears throat> I'm sure the shepherds in their lives felt like that. I think it's interesting seeing the difference. You know, in this, the first two chapters of Luke, there's three stories of an angel coming and saying something. Uh, there's uh, Jesus's cousin's parents, uh, who Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, his parents, uh, Zechariah, was 
had in the temple was an angel said, "Hey, your your wife, who's old in age, is going to have a baby," and you know he doesn't believe the angel, and he's mute for for the entire pregnancy. That's what his punishment was, I guess. And then Mary is told, "You're going to have a son," even though she's never been with a man. She's going to have a son, and, and and there's that experience, you know. And she's and she hides these things in her heart, and she writes a song about it. And, and then we have these, the angels coming to these shepherds. And it's interesting, the difference between the, especially Zechariah and these, these angels, or these, these shepherds, because their reaction was, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which the Lord has told us about. And that's what we do as believers. We go to worship the king. That's why we're here today to worship the King. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. Why would he say that if he wasn't pleased with these shepherds? What in the world have these shepherds done to to earn this pleasing of the Lord? Probably nothing. I mean, nothing of note, nothing of, 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 uh, of, of, of to give them a greater stature. But God looks at them, and God chooses them, and God chooses us. God has chosen you, and said, I want you to worship Jesus. That's how Luke tells this story. He paints this picture with a lot of details. You know, it's it's kind of a play-by-play of what's happening, a lot of details. Most of what we know from, you know, of the, the nativity story and all that, Though, though uh, traditionally we kind of get a lot of things wrong uh, with, with how things have played out over the centuries, that's a different sermon altogether. But uh, what we know about Jesus' build-up is coming from this Luke 2. And a lot of times people will, will look at the, the Bible and they'll say, well, Matthew uh, tells the, the genealogy of Jesus and the beginning of Jesus' life, and Luke does it. And, uh, but, you know, uh, but John, you know, he doesn't really, he just kind of ignores all that and, uh, and just kind of jumps into to Jesus as an adult. Actually, John, the Gospel of John in the first chapter, paints a, a bigger picture, this huge portrait of the story of Jesus coming into the world. And I'm going to read part of it here, but this is, is really kind of amazing. Because he, he, uh, he starts off by talking about the Word being Jesus being the beginning, and the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And he, and he, he, he lays that foundation, and then he, he talks about the Word becoming flesh, which is the body of Christ, becoming Jesus in the flesh here on earth. And sandwiched in between there, there's some, some really amazing verses that, that I think sometimes we miss. I know I have missed them. Listen, listen to what he says here. Because this is really sandwiched in, in between here, is us. This is what the Bible says. This is John chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. The light, which is Jesus, the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He's going to describe three people, three types of people that have a reaction to Jesus. So he says Jesus was in the world. He created the world. God is omnipresent. There's no uh, getting, getting away from God. He is here. And, and he is the light of the world, which means he's, he's shining his light to everyone. But then there's something that happens. There's this. There's those that, that didn't know. He says, yet the world did not know him. And there are people that don't know God, don't know Jesus. They haven't come to a realization. They haven't believed in Christ. Some of us can relate to that. I know, I know some of us here have, you know, didn't grow up in a, in a household that was a Christian household, but came to Christ in a different way other than our family, which I think is amazing because that means that somebody told you about Jesus, which is part of what we're called to do. And so there's those that don't know him at all. And we live our lives, and then that's that. 
And then there's the second group of people that reject Jesus. It says he came to his own. This, in the context of this verse, would be the Jewish people, his, his tribe, his people. He came to his own people, but they did not receive him. They didn't want anything to do with him. They rejected him. And I think that we can apply that sometimes to our lives, um, to certain families, certain ones of us, that maybe we grew up in church. Maybe we, our parents are Christian. We, we know who Jesus is. We've experienced who Jesus is, but we, we reject Jesus. There's an expression that I, I love, and that is that God has no grandchildren. You're not going to be born into the kingdom of God in a physical way. Actually, there's a, the next verse I'm going to read is going to explain that. It's all our, our, our decision to be believers in Christ. There's the third person. This is the believer. Those that believe, and then I want us to look at the result of that. He says, But all to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. I'm going to pause there. I, I love the way that that is phrased. There's more to it than I know. This is one of those that, that I kind of have like a mental bookmark in my mind. And I'm like, okay, God, uh, at some point you're going to reveal to me or you're going to have me come across a paper or you have me come across a, uh, a sermon or somebody that is that really understands this verse. If I was writing this, I would say those who did receive him, who believed in his name, become children of God. But he says have give, he gave the right to become children of God. We not only just are, we're given rights. We are part of his family. It's like you get the key to the front door. At my parents' house, we have a code that all the family knows. We have the code to the door to get in the garage and come in the back door. That's what he's saying. Those that believe, they get the code to go into the back door of the family of God. What an amazing gift. What an amazing, just being the servant of God would be great enough. If he had said, those that believed, get to serve the Lord, that is great enough. But to say you get to be a part of the family of God, a child of God, a brother and sister, a co-heir with Christ, wow, that is amazing. And in verse 13, he says, who were born not of blood, in other words, not physically, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. So not, it wasn't anybody that manipulated coming into God's family. It wasn't somebody that said, I'm going to figure this out. It wasn't someone that said, I'm going to have some kids, and because I'm a believer, they will be believers. No, it, it is because the will of God, not by the will of man, but of God. God wills for you, God wills for us to be part of his family. That's the whole point. Even in the first chapters of Genesis, that is the point, to be a family with God. It's an amazing thing. So, when we believe, we become children of God, become part of his family. And here's the amazing thing about it, is there's an individual aspect of that. There's an individual you know, I made a personal decision for Christ. But there's also a corporate aspect of that. That when I become a child of God, and you become a child of God, we become siblings in Christ. You're my brother in Christ. You're my sister in Christ. We become a part of God's family. This is why... The name of our church is Christ Family Church. 
because we are a part of the family of God. And, and just like, just like uh, earthly families, you know, we, we can be uh, like my brother, he lives in St. Louis, and he's got his family there, and they're part there together. They're still a part of our family, but we're geographically separated. And so, though we're still related, the same way our church family, we're still related to every Christian on the planet and every other church family, but we get to eat together. We get to come to the table together. We get to have Thanksgiving together. Every week in worship, not just on Sunday mornings, through our lives. I would encourage us all to, to make this a, something that we not just acknowledge, but if it's not there in our hearts, ask God to put that in our hearts, the, the realization of, of, what is, of what we have with each other. That it's not just an individual relationship with God, but as a church family, we get to worship God and elevate his name together. Super special. There's something so special about that. We get, just like these shepherds, on the day Jesus is born, get invited into the kingdom of God. Get invited into God's family. It pleased God to do that. You know, when I was... Uh, this last week, I don't know if you ever watch YouTube, but, you know, like YouTube will have those ads that, that, that pre-roll, and you have like five seconds to click off the ad, you know. Or you, you got to watch it for five seconds, and then you can click off of it. And I was doing something, and, uh, and, and, and I was kind of interested in the ad, not necessarily to buy, but I was like, this is an interesting thing. And it was of a, uh, a company, some sort of company in Scotland, that they would sell you one square foot of Scottish land, okay, which is kind of ridiculous, but they tell you one square foot, and then you could become an official lord or lady of Scotland. Okay, that was like they'd send you a piece of paper and everything, and you know, and, and like part of me was like, you know, that'd be kind of cool. And even on the ad, they they showed somebody like they had it framed and they were putting it in their office, you know, like Lord whoever, and uh, and. And then I started thinking, you know, actually the, the funnest thing would be to, to, to get this and then go to Scotland, like with, somehow like with this paperwork, you know, that who knows what website it's coming from and how authentic it is, and you have no idea. The point is, our family experience with God as children of God goes far beyond a piece of paper from some website that's officially a lord or lady. You know, if you were to go to Scotland with that certificate and try to attend some sort of ball or something like that, they're going to laugh at you. You're not invited. No matter what that website says, you're not invited. Just because we have a square foot of land, listen, we are invited into the kingdom of God. And this is what it is. This is what it all comes down to, is that we have the opportunity together. This is how God has made it. There's a term in the Bible that God describes what this family looks like, and it's called the church. We are the church. You are the church. I am the church. Us together, we are the church. We cannot even actually be as strong of Christians as we, as we are called to be without each other. We need each other. That's why it's called the body of Christ. And so this morning, as the worship team is coming up, we're going to stand and we're going to worship the Lord with a few more songs. And uh, as we're closing out, we've got a, we're, we're going to end a little bit early today probably. And I'm just thankful for the opportunity for us in this room and watching online to be able to together lift the name of Jesus as a church family together. Let's close in prayer. God, I thank you so much for my church family. For every single person that, uh, that is a part of this fellowship together, Lord, I pray that, that this year, 2022, that that understanding, that realization of, of who we are as children of God, that you are our Father, and also as siblings in Christ, 
would just become a great reality, Lord. We worship you and we praise you. For anybody that, that may be listening that has said, you know what, I'm not a member of this family, but I want to be. I want to be a believer. I don't want to be somebody that, that just doesn't know God and lives my life without knowing him. I don't want to be somebody who's rejecting God. I want to be a believer in Christ. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. There's nothing magical about a prayer or anything like that. It's just a, a, an outward confession of saying, yes, I want to be a part of God's family. Because Jesus, he didn't just come as a baby. He lived his life, and he died on the cross for this to take place. He paid the price for our sins. So we say, God, I admit I'm a sinner, and I want you to come into my heart. I want to be a member of your family. I believe in the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray this prayer. You don't have to repeat after me. Just pray this along in your heart if you want to become a member of God's family, a child of God. God, you sent your son Jesus to this world for me. Just like one of those shepherds, you have chosen me, God. And it's my responsibility to say, yes, let's go to Bethlehem and worship Jesus. Or I cannot. Lord, today I choose to be a believer in you. I choose to worship you. I give you my life. I give you my heart, Lord. I thank you that you have said I can be a child of your kingdom. I can be a child of God. That you can be my father. And, Lord, that I get to be a part of a, a, a family that is greater than any family that can ever be conceived physically, Lord. I give you glory and I give you honor. I admit that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Come into my life as I enter into this family. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and worship the Lord this morning.